Hi everybody, so I hope you have a great day. So it's uh, Sunday today, is, uh, it's very fantastic weather, sunny. And I've got some time, so I'd like to share with you a couple of tips and tricks regarding photo shooting video. As a couple of you were asking me on everything I'm doing on LinkedIn and YouTube, so what type of devices you are using for um, for your footage, etc. So as a photographer, of course, since the last 25 years, uh, I'm I'm using a, a professional camera. So on my side, it is an Nikon, and the, the one I'm using is a Nikon uh, D810. So this is not a new camera. Uh, D800 is 2012, D810 2014, and just last year, on the Nikon available D850. So the D810 is 36 million pixel. Of course, I've got the right lens. 2470 to uh, 2.8 and of course uh, with such camera uh, you have to, to get the right uh, lens and I've got a lot of them I'm so I'm using this one but I'm also using the 70 to 2.8 I'm using the 1635.4 very good good one and also the fisheye 16 this one is just awesome providing very wide wide view and I'm using some time for uh, doing some uh, virtual tour. Uh, so this camera is a good one, of course, and for that reason. So it's quick, it's fast, it's sharp. Uh, the, the picture is just awesome, a lot of details. Um, of course, I'm waiting for the A50, uh, 45 million pixels, much more details, much more dynamic range. Uh, the D810 is not so good for video, it's just full HD, but it's very slow, uh, you have no tracking and today more is, um, you can do better things with GH4, Panasonic GH5, Sony uh, Alpha 7, 9, whatever. And so of course and in September a lot of cameras have been unveiled, so Nikon unveiled the new uh, mirrorless or Z6 and Z7, but I don't think you see, you just saw a price just crazy. It's nearly 4,000 plus 4,000 for a for lens. We cannot afford it, and even photographer cannot afford it. And most of my friends are in, in the in, in the market are just using old camera, the Nikon D3, D3s, something like that. We don't have the money for when you know the, the money back you have from uh, f uh, just for a newspaper, what you what whatever it's very much or whatever. So. So I'm using this one, but one of the issues of, of such camera is just how oh, you, you have to carry a one one day with all the optics you just saw before. It's just crazy. It's uh, it's very uh, heavy to carry, um, and you have also to take care because if anything is happening to that lens, it just cuts you. Uh, it just happened two times for me. It's more as the price of a lens at the end. So, so. Uh, that's my first, and this is my patient, definitely, uh, using Nikon stuff, but how I can do something faster with a good quality. And in fact, we have to go one step more forward. Uh, now, mo uh, I would say my, my main camera is now the iPhone. So this one is the iPhone XS Max. Um, uh, of course, it has cost, and especially I'm using the, uh, the latest uh, with the biggest storage, 500 megs or 500 gig, sorry, after a byte. Uh, the reason why it's very simple, 4K, one minute, 60 frames per second, it's 400 meg, okay? So it means just one hour 4K footage is 60 gig, etc., etc. So, and I'm shooting more or less between 2,000 and 3,000 pictures per month. Uh, but it's a fantastic one, so the autofatic is very, very fast, just compared to a Nikon, nothing you can compare. Uh, video is very smooth, you have a hardware stabilization, so whatever you're using is 7 plus, 8 plus, iPhone 10, you have an hardware stabilization. Um, you have some new uh, capabilities now using so to get some bokeh effect, and especially with I iOS 12 and XS Max, you can edit, and so you can change the aperture but it's not so good in fact because uh, if, if you just shoot at 1.8 you are asking for a depth to 16 it's not really changing so it's more a software than but it's it's going it's it's on the right direction so i'm using a lot the iphone it's a uh, fantastic uh, it's very it's just very fast it just works in fact at the end and but in the meantime for alpha the price i'm using the uh, uh, the OnePlus 6. The OnePlus 6 is a fantastic camera, fingerprints, face ID, everything. 
uh, the screen is fantastic too and just 500 okay so it means that with these two uh, with these two cameras, can, you can do more or less every, more or less the same, but this one is, and compared to this one, is three times uh, less expensive. So of course, uh, so of course it's Android. So I just moved to Android nine, so it's um, some improvement, but it's just like some Windows machines. Sometimes you have some bugs. You don't know exactly what's happened. So, but whatever, compared to the first Android I have at, at the beginning, so the One Plus Six is very, very good. If you have to buy an Android device, please buy this one. Don't spend your money on Samsung, things like that, which are two times more expensive. You have latest CPU, it's very fast, the focus is very good, and you have get you can get some very stunning pictures. Even if I don't agree with the format, I'd rather the format of the iPhone, even if I don't like also the format of the iPhone, because something I like is this camera. This is the DX1. This one is um, 2436 for the, for the format, just like the Nikon, 20 million pixels. Why I'm using this device? Just because of a button, just because I want to control the depth of my picture, okay? I don't want to, to, to uh, that this doesn't have to be done by any software, because at the end of the day, the software is not so good. So, and which is something is amazing with this camera. If you don't, if you don't have any devices, you can use this small viewfinder uh, just to to get uh, just to to take your picture. You have the SD card, so you can save a raw file or the S raw files and send the JPEG to the iPhone. And how does it works? Just very easy. You just have to plug in using the lighting port uh, the DX. So and at the end of the day, your iPhone is just the viewfinder. It's just opening the application and this app is just awesome. You can really do everything you want because I'm always shooting in manual mode, okay? If you are a teenager, if you're stuck in, okay, you can use uh, some automatic mode, but it doesn't, you cannot control anything. So the purpose of photography, that what will make the difference, of course, if this is your eye, but if this is also your knowledge, okay? And um, so, this app is fantastic. So these guys, DxO, has, has made a fantastic job. The issue is that bankruptcy at the beginning of this year, so no more DxO2. So it will be the, the first and the last session, but I'm still using. And just look at these examples. The first picture has been, uh, is coming from the DxO1, okay? And the second picture from the iPhone. Now zoom. You can see on the iPhone, you have some the glass is a little bit blurry and compared to, to the DX1, which is just perfect. That makes a difference, okay? And in fact, this, the DX1 and this one are exactly working the same, but you can imagine it's not the same way they are in the same time. So, uh, and so DX will provide also a nice application. Something also I miss to tell you is all about here. When I'm shooting video, I'm using the filmic app. I really advise you to use this app because as usual, you can also control anything from, uh, from, from a manual mode. You can control the audio, you can control the air aperture, you can control uh, the focus, the manual mode, everything you can use. And this app is just fantastic, okay? This is really something you have to, to use if you want to do some pro video footage, okay? Um, so um, what else? So sometimes uh, you need to capture some ambience. And the one I'm using is a GoPro. So I'm using the GoPro since the beginning. So it's very good video, a good device to capture the ambience of a room, etc. Just uh, put it on the table and just have to uh, um, to get very wide uh, wide angle. Uh, so this one is a GoPro Six. Of course, last week the GoPro Seven had just been announced. But the GoPro 6 is very good because you have hardware stabilization, very high dynamic range, especially when you are moving from one room to the other, to another room. So uh, I, I'm very enjoyed. The version 5 was a little bit a mess, but the version 6 is very good. So I'm still waiting for what will happen for the version, version 7. And uh, some other devices I'm using is this one. This one is just great. This is Insta360. So this is 361 pro to, pr to make some 360 video. That's really great, great. Very great stuff, 44 million pixels. And the way to use the, uh, it's very easy. Just plug in on your iPhone. You get also an uh, Android model. And in fact, you can just fly like this and you can, as I'm doing every day, uh, 
during every trade show can get, get a tour. And the marketing argument of Insta is you don't have a drone, okay, you have Insta and they're just stunning. And uh, in fact, what I'm using, because I've got a lot of trippers to, uh, to manage, is this one. So if the only thing you have to do is just plug in, okay, stretch the tripods and just moving around. And it's just like having a drone because you are flying over the room. That just, and the dynamic range, everything is very, very good. So very great job from Insta. Of course, when you are, uh, want to do some um, video footage, you're, you need to get a gamble. And I'm using the Osmo Gamble to, to make this video. So this one is good. I've got also the Smooth. I'm waiting for the Flower Motion, some, some new one coming uh, before the end of the year. And so at the end of the day, if you really want your, uh, the minimum things you need to carry to make an interview or to do anything on footage, I'm using this one. So this one is Base Grip. Base Grip, uh, Base Grip is a US company providing this grip and also the optic. And the optic provide me a wider angle and it's also improving the light inside the sensor. And it's very easier, you know, to control and also you can get some tripod from Manfrot. I'm using Manfrot also for, for the lights. I'm using Rod for for the mink, so I've got this one, I've got the mini mink, etc. And this one is very good. So, you, and the only thing you have to do is just to put the iPhone your, or your smartphone here, okay? And that's all. And so, it's also easier uh, when you have to travel or to do some uh, some traveling. So just have to like this. That's pretty awesome. Or moving like that. So this one is really great. And just with that, you can do everything you want. Okay, that's really great. So. Uh, at the end of the day, when you have your footage ready, you need to um, uh, you need to uh, to do some uh, um, uh, I would say some uh, some f your final footage, doing some transition, uh, uh, grabbing some collection of pictures, and the, uh, the the software I'm using is the software from Quick. Quick is from GoPro. It's uh, the old um, replay application, a French company, and this one is really great. In, j in just half half an hour, I can make a four minutes after movie video. It's very easy. Just pick it. You just have to pick up a collection of pictures of videos. Uh, then you choose a theme, you choose your music, and it's all based on machine learning, AI, etc. And it just doing so well. So, and so, reason why I really advise you to use uh, Creek. I'm using also Sly, which is a more advanced software. Um, of course, you can use some other, uh, you have Mo uh, iMovie for iPhone, uh, you have some other um, video stuff, just like from, uh, um, uh, I don't remember, but you have a, a couple of things, but for me, it's, uh, it's very the best one. And as soon as I've got some more advanced work to do, of course, I grab everything on my laptop, I'm using Final Cut, or you can use Adobe Premiere, whatever. Uh, but the purpose and the success of such video is to be able to share the video the day at the end of the event, not in one week, not in three months, okay? All right, it's dead, okay? I saw, I see so many people, uh, they are spending f uh, grants of, uh, of money, or f sometimes 10, 15 grants, and after one week, you ha we have nothing. With everything you see here and just uh, all the mobile things, uh, the, at the end of the, of the last day of the event, everything is on YouTube. So, so uh, I think I'm okay. So um, I will try to, to show everything I'm using. Of course, if you have any question, just feel free to ask me. And so I will just make a quick list of everything I was showing so you can see every, in details every piece of devices I'm using. Uh, and also, the, the next step is so now I need to um, to, to collect, I need to organize that content. So on my side, so I've got my own dam, I've got 1.7 million of assets since the last 25, nearly 30 years, so, and I'm doing a lot of indexing, retouching. So the next video, I will explain you how you have to organize your asset, how to ingest metadata. And in the next video, so you can see then how we can use the dam, the digital asset management, to, to share that content because if we are doing so many pictures and videos, the only purpose of that is to share that content. So whatever you are working for um, a brand, uh, an, an agency, I will try to, to give you my experience how to manage that very quickly. So thank you for your time. So I know I just say you bye-bye and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.